of all the freshmen, I mean, you got a lot of guys, a lot of decisions to be made this week. Do you have a number in your mind about how many of those guys will play in game one? We've got an eye, we've got our eye on about 12 of them on our side of the ball. So, um, pretty big number. Uh, you know, I mean, you hate to do that at this point in time. Some guys have stuck, you know, have, have, have showed some stuff, but until we get on Kyle Field and play an opponent, you really don't know. And that's what Saturday's going to be all about for us. Weird on the left. Coach, you've got a lot of turnover on the defensive line from last year, obviously losing Mathis and Spencer and moving Julian over to, to Rush. Um, how has that bunch looked in there? Are you a little more comfortable with your depth this year than last? Uh, yeah, at this point, I think I'm a lot more comfortable. You know, um, At least we know kind of what we have with that first group going in uh, to the ball games. You know, The unknown for us is all the rookies that are going to be playing. Uh, a little bit like Julian last year, you know, I mean, we didn't know what product we had out of him until we got to the Florida game, you know. Um, so it'll be interesting to come Sunday to see when they get their feet wet, you know, how they respond in the big stage with the lights on and, you know, all of our fans there. Back right. Hey, Coach. David Santa with scout.com. Curious to get your assessment of the, the linebacker core. You had a couple of veterans coming back, but also mm -hmm. uh, Coach mentioned earlier about uh, Darian Claiborne and oh. Jordan Master Giovanni and Tommy Sanders. Just wondering your, your assessment through the fall camp. I like all three of them. You know, um, uh, Tommy can really run. And I've been so pleased with Jordan Master Giovanni. And Darian Claiborne is just a football player. Uh, football makes sense to him. Um, you know, to be so young, uh, he loves football. Uh, I think he understands. He's understanding what we do, which is quite a bit on defense. And the same thing with Jordan. Uh, been pleased with all three of those guys. Over here to the left. Mark, can you discuss the play of Clay Honeycutt in fall camp and also kind of how you guys will uh, uh, fill in for the absences of Everett and Raven on Saturday? Well, we'll, we'll rotate a bunch of corners, obviously, with uh, the Shazer being out. Um, um, been very pleasantly surprised with Clay Honeycutt, to me, he's our Howard Matthews story. Sitting here last year at this time, uh, Howard wasn't even in our thoughts. And he has just come on, become a leader, uh, really played well down the stretch, continued that through spring ball, continued that through two a days. And I see Clay doing the exact same thing. Um, he's going to play a vital role for us, and he's deserved it. I mean, he's shown me and our staff uh, just about every day uh, flashes of stuff we hadn't seen from him before. And that's part of the maturation process. So uh, that was a very, very pleasant surprise, and we're counting on Clay um, a lot this fall. To the back, can you talk about having a few suspensions there, being a little shorthanded, and playing a veteran team like Rice with a lot of guys that do return and, you know, being careful with that a little bit? Well, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, this Rice team is, is a very veteran team. they got nine returning starters, uh, two very good wideouts, two very good running backs, two capable quarterbacks, and the offensive line that does just what – Coach Bailiff wants them to do. You know, they, they, they run what they run. I think their center does a great job of IDing things. Uh, we'll have our hands full. Um, but it's going to be fun, you know, again, uh, to see our, uh, you get as your works deserve. And I think the kids have worked really hard. Um, I think it's kind of coming together now to see them move it from that field over there out to Kyle Field against an opponent um, is going to be fun and a little bit scary. Over here to the left. And then down front. Coach, is this the youngest defense you've had as a defensive coordinator? And, wow. and if so, have you had to change your approach any? Um, again, I think that's what Saturday's all about. We have narrowed down. You know, to answer your first question, I'd have to think back. I mean, it's been 23 years. I can't, I can't remember. Um, I'm sure we have somewhere along the line. Uh, we've had to scale back a little bit. Um, but again, unfortunately, in the first game, it's a game of unknowns. You know, I don't know. Rice lost three really good tight ends. Are they going to use tight ends again? I don't know. Um, those are things we're going to find out in the first quarter. Um, yes, we've scaled back a little bit, but uh, all bullets will be available if things change and how they approach the game when they come in here Saturday. Down front. We're just visiting with Julian Obioha for the uh -huh. first time. And, right. And, uh, what do you think? He's been fun to talk to. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. You know, and as a, as he's still a young guy, but how much are you counting on him to help lead this defense? Well, I mean, he's not a young guy anymore. I mean, he played started 12 games last year. So um, he's been on the biggest stages in some of the biggest games. Uh, he can't be a youngster no more. We're, we're young enough, as I sit here and look at all this red that are freshmen. Uh, he, he, has to, he has to be a guy for us and uh, take over that role a little bit. I would say that's uh, very, very true. 
Um, you know, Julian's one of those guys. Last Saturday during the scrimmage, uh, you know, obviously we kept him out. I uh, wanted to keep him fresh. And, and the whole time he's on me going, Coach, you can't make that call. That's a bad call. Don't make this call. You can't do this to this freshman. He don't know what he's doing yet, Coach. You can't make that call. That's, that's Julian. Um, the good thing about that is he will be able to anticipate, I think, what's getting ready to come into the game from me to them uh, and articulate that, if you will, to all these youngsters we got playing beside of him. We'll go to the left right here and then over to Suzanne. Uh, Julian mentioned, uh, James Sullivan, the bat. Julian mentioned how the uh, the leadership has been, there's not been a one prominent leader. What kind of uh, leaders have you guys seen around the defense, uh, you and your staff? It's coming. You know, I think it's coming. I think, I think you know, Julian brings a lot of energy. You know, Clay's trying to lead a little bit. I think Howard's doing a really good job. Tony Hurd is always the energizer bunny. Uh, I've seen some leadership out of Donnie Baggs. Uh, Alonzo Williams, nobody's talking about him. Uh, you know, Alonzo played last year, and Alonzo's playing really well right now. And I know there's a lot of talk about our front, but when you look at Obi, you know, Julie, uh, 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 Alonzo, um, the Taylor twins have had a great camp, We've got a lot of juice. Um, we ne may not be as far off as most predict. It'll be interesting. We'll see. To the right. Hey, Mark, talking about the front. One, it's going to be a gazillion degrees on Saturday. How many bodies okay. are going to be That's available? Okay. I tell you what, here, here's what I've seen. You guys have been at practice. It's been hot, really hot. And what Larry Jackson and his staff have done, we've had no issues whatsoever. That's, that's uncanny. That's unheard of. I miss 104, 106 uh, out there at practice. And you know how fast we go, how many plays we get. Mm -hmm. And we have not had a conditioning problem, a uh, medical problem yet. Um, uh, you know, some of the young guys don't know how to practice yet. It's not that they're out of shape. They just don't know how to practice yet at this level, um, at this tempo. And, and I've really seen that come on the last two weeks. You know, the kids are it's not phasing them. Uh, I'm really, to answer your question, I'm not really worried about it. Well, I mean, how many, how much of a rotation will you have? And if Kirby Ennis is serving a suspension against Rice, is that a true freshman going to start in his mm -hmm. place? Probably. Um, probably. There you go. <laughs> to the left. Hey, Mark. David Harris from the Eagle. Um, how much are y'all putting on Nate Askew to be one of your primary pass rushers? Well, I mean, we're, you know, a lot's on Nate's plate. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see him flipping on the sides, you know, on the other side of the ball. He's the guy I'm going to have my eye on, obviously, Saturday. Um, we'll have Sean Washington ready to go if, if, if things, and I'm not anticipating that, but as things don't go as planned, um, Sean will be in the game early, and, and, and we've told Nate that. Um, we, yes, we are counting on him. Uh, um, uh, he needs to come. He needs to tackle. He needs to blitz. He needs to cover. He needs to play within the system. All the things that we're asking everybody else to do, and there's no excuses just because you move from offense in the spring because there's a freshman sitting right behind him ready to take his job. So we'll know a lot more again after the first quarter and a half Saturday. Um, as you can tell, i got a lot of things we're going to have to be watching Saturday <clears throat> in that first quarter and a half. Uh, and, you know, our eyes will be on him. Yeah, and just judging from the scrimmage and the practice that we've mm -hmm. seen, I mean, your guys are inexperienced, but would you say this is one of the more athletic bunches you've had? That's a great question. I think by far, um, without a doubt, if we can get people in certain situations, uh, we can put a lot, a lot of speed on the field. More speed than we had last year, without a question. Um, so if we can get people in the right situations and get them to third down, uh, I think we put a lot of speed on the football field and, and some fresh bodies, which we couldn't do last year. To the middle. Robert Sessna, the Eagle. Coach, can you talk about where this group's MO is, you feel, as far as creating turnovers uh -huh. would be? I'm sorry, one more time. Where do you feel this group might be as far as creating turnovers? That was an area last year. Of concern. Yeah. Fumbles, yes. yes, creating creating fumbles. We had some interceptions, some big interceptions. <laughs> um, uh, but, but taking the football away, uh, I, Again, it's the who, where, why, you know, how stage. Um, there's going to be so many guys playing that need to get lined up and do their job and make the tackle. You know, that's kind of a byproduct for the older guys. You know, get there, get there angry, and, and take the ball away. Um, I think that will have to come as the season goes because, again, these guys are just trying to get lined up. And what's my job? And, and who am I king? And what's my target? What am I striking? And disengaging off a block and running to the football. Uh, and then comes the strips. <laughs> uh, uh, so we'll see. We've worked extremely hard on it. Um, you know, some of the younger guys, I'm not harping as much on them. That's why I love Darian Claiborne so much. Darian's our, it's, a, it's a second knack for that kid. Um, uh, but anyway, you know, some of our older guys are going to have to match the production that we lost last year. We lost a lot of production points 
with the guys that graduated and left early. Who are the guys that are going to match that production? Uh, do I have to do it with my calls, or, or, or are you guys going to take the onus and match that production? And again, that's what Saturday will be about. Over here to the left. Coach, you talked a little bit about where the team is ranked defensively, you know, nationally and in the SEC. You know, do you like that underdog role, and, yep. and how do you use that? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't bother me, um, to be honest with you. I, I don't really look at those. I know what we have. I think I know what we can do. Uh, we just got to, you know, talk cheap. You got to go prove it. And uh, so I don't get caught up in that quite as much. Over here to the left, Sam. What are some of the unique challenges Rice throws at you? <sighs> Veteran offensive football team. I mean, they've got their whole plate, you know. I mean, these kids have been playing together for a while. So their whole arsenal is at their disposal, you know, in the game one, where we may have to tailor ours back a little bit. Uh, because of our youthfulness and our inexperience. Um, you know, I've challenged the kids and I've warned them. I mean, I'm taking all the bullets in the holster to the game. Uh, but if I think they can do some things, uh, they can make some adjustments. They can say, hey, you know, if we do this, we're going to counter with this. We're not quite there yet. So the scary thing for me, sitting there, you know, knowing David and, and his offensive staff, uh, they're brilliant. they got really good minds, uh, football minds. Um, you know, I've played against Rice when, obviously, when I was at Marshall, and I'm very aware of Dave, and we're really good friends. Um, so that concerns me that they'll be able to make a lot more adjustments than maybe we will. And our challenge to our kids has been play fast, run to the ball, and tackle. 